um, the EU and some member states have also um, undertaken some quite important um, work inside Syria, even as the conflict has got worse, uh, projects on trying to support opposition forces in the areas that they won from the regime. However, increasingly the political leverage that the EU has over the conflict has evaporated. And today we have to recognise, despite all the good work the EU has done, it's basically failed to advance any of its m minimal objectives in Syria. It looks very absent from the diplomatic game today. The EU leaders are talking in familiar terms about the importance of a political, an inclusive political transition. But in the current circumstances where the regime seems to be really on the verge of achieving peace on its terms, it's difficult to, I think it'd be difficult to argue that that inclusive transition is on the verge of being achieved. If you talk to members of the Syrian opposition, they feel very disappointed and a little bit betrayed by the EU. Uh, that's their perception, of course. So they, you know, I mean, their argument would be that European governments, perhaps unwittingly, were guilty of leaving them very vulnerable, that they were incited to rise up and then uh, left at the, at the mercy of the regime. I think it would be difficult to disagree with opposition leaders in Syria who expressed this feeling of, of disappointment and betrayal.